Okay, this afternoon I want to talk a little bit about uh, wild, wild weather. And uh, essentially I'm going to talk about the Ice Age, uh, which I believe and ICR teaches occurred following the flood and in fact was a major consequence of the Genesis flood. And I'll tell you why, and it's a very exciting thing. And I have some, I think, very interesting graphics to show you as well. But I also want to talk about uh, three other topics. Actually, on this presentation, I could spend about three hours talking to you. Uh, I have hyperlinks built in because it allows me to skip a whole bunch of it, uh, depending on the audience I'm at. And I thought today, though, I would give you a little bit of information on four topics very quickly. Uh, the vapor canopy, some of the latest findings on that then the uh, ice age, which I call the big freeze, and then some um, global climate modeling using uh, computer models on PCs, believe it or not, and then a little bit of the latest work of one of my students on hypercanes, having to do with giant hurricanes that probably uh, formed on the surface of the earth right after the flood as well because of the hot temperatures on the ocean surface. The uh, vapor canopy model, as many of you have asked, and I've been putting you off all week here to give me a chance to tell you a little bit about it here today, has been around for many years. And the vapor canopy model has had its ups and downs. It's a concept that at the time of creation, God separated the waters from the uh, firmament, or the atmosphere as we believe that is, from the waters, uh, the waters were separated from beneath this firmament and from above the firmament. So that it, it, we suggest that there was a layer of water placed above the atmosphere, which protected life on the earth and may have been an explanation for some of the longevity of the patriarchs if there was enough water up there to produce higher pressures. Uh, it explains a number of things, such as why there were no rainbows until the flood, because at the flood, this canopy would have collapsed allowing the light conditions to be different and rain to form and a number of other things. The nice thing about the vapor canopy is it explains a whole bunch of, of statements in scripture, but it is not an explicit statement in scripture. You have to understand this is a model. It's a theoretical construct that was put together from various ideas and so on. And about 30 years ago, uh, yeah, let's see, has it been now? Yeah, 30 years ago, Dr. Joseph Dillo uh, did his work at Dallas Theological Seminary under Charles Ryrie, and his dissertation was on the vapor canopy. If you've never seen that report, it's called The Waters Above, and it suggested a model that went through and talked about all the history of the vapor canopy and the history of the, the flood and that sort of thing, justifying such an idea. And he worked with me when he was a student there. I just finished my doctorate at Colorado State University, Dr. Henry Morris referred him to me, and I helped him as a, while he was a student at Dallas Theological Seminary, one of his advisors, on some of the technical aspects of that uh, model. And uh, so when he published that model, uh, it had some of the ideas that I had worked with him on. Uh, since that time, Dr. Dillo hasn't done a, a lot of work in that area because he spent the remainder, or the last 30 years, basically, uh, in, a, in a missionary operation behind the Iron Curtain to the uh, Soviet countries. And then uh, about 12, 15 years ago, went to Hong Kong and is now doing a similar ministry behind, uh, into China, uh, basically biblical education by extension, teaching pastors in these countries and in seminary training, excellent ministry. Uh, so he hasn't done a lot on that area in the last few years, but he's maintained an interest in it. But I've been the primary one to continue that research because I was intrigued by it and had the expertise to continue working with it. So several of my students have done work on it and I have as well. Unfortunately, we found some problems with the model. Uh, it's such an attractive model, I can't give it up though. It explains so many things if it would work. The big problem with it is though, when you put a lot of water vapor into the atmosphere, say 40 feet of liquid water in vapor form, like Dr. Dillo suggested, uh, you get an incredible greenhouse effect. I mean, we're talking about 600, 800 degrees Fahrenheit at the surface of the earth under such a canopy. So I've been struggling with that, trying to to reduce that heating by all kinds of various techniques, and so far have not been able to do a complete solution to that. It just, it just stays hot. But I was about to give it up about a year ago, or a little more, a year and a half ago, and I decided to do one more effort at this model, and if it didn't work, I was gonna quit working on it. I had many other things I needed to do. 
But uh, I did discover, or not discover so much, is suggest one other possible scenario, and it has allowed me to have cooler conditions. Unfortunately, the suggestion I am making is maybe even more controversial than the vapor canopy itself, and it has to do with how much heat output the sun has. So I just kind of moved the problem from the earth to the sun. Let the solar scientists solve the problem, right? <laughs> well, so I'm just suggesting as a possibility this is not a solution, but it, it is an interesting uh, issue. Let me, let me make a few comments about this, and then we'll go on to the ice age. Okay, uh, basically the model is as similar to the one that uh, Jody Dillo had uh, 30 years ago in terms of a two-layer canopy. The lower layer is the atmosphere. Well, first of all, the horizontal axis here is the temperature from 30 degrees to 100 degrees centigrade. That means that 30 degrees is about average, a little warmer than average temperature on the Earth today. 100 degrees centigrade is the boiling point of water. Uh, the vertical axis is the height up in the atmosphere from zero to 50 kilometers. Um, at any rate, if you have a water vapor canopy resting on top of the Earth's atmosphere, it would squeeze it down and make it much shallower, and then the water vapor would be above. With the kind of temperature distributions we assume here, you would end up with a massive inversion condition, which leads to air being warmer the higher up you go, light winds, no precipitation, very few clouds, uh, no rain, no rainbows, and things like that. So it has a very attractive feature in terms of the way the Bible talks about the pre-flood world. Um, anyway, that's the basic assumption. That's pretty simplistic also. Uh, obviously, you'd think there might be some mixing between that upper layer and the lower layer, and it'd go away fairly quickly. It turns out it doesn't. It persists fairly well, as long as there's not a lot of strong winds, which there probably wouldn't be in those kind of conditions. Okay, well, given that kind of a model, then, what kind of temperatures would you get? Uh, we started with a vertical temperature distribution that was uniform at 170 degrees Kelvin, which is about a minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Very cold. You see that here in the left part of the, the image. And then allowed solar radiation to warm it with time. And these intervals, each one of these lines is like, the first one is at time zero, zero days. 